So today, we're gonna be making the old snake game. You remember that old game you used to play on your mom's Nokia phone and you thought that was the pinnacle of your goddamn life? But in this video, we're gonna be recreating that game inside Unity and it's gonna be 3D. But if you read the title already, you know what's the catch. I can only copy and paste my code, so I'm not allowed to write any of my own code. I mean, like I write any of my code anyways. This is how every program in the world is programming, so it should be easy right? There are some rules though. Rule number one, I can only copy from code snippets I find online and from responses. Rule number two, I can copy from my own scripts. So are you ready? So to start off, I needed a quick level, just something to put my snake on. I made a few materials and adjusted my camera so it aligns perfectly. So that is our quick scene done. It was time to make the snake, and what better way to do it is by placing some cubes. It's gonna be a fine looking ass cubic snake. Now I didn't want to spend too much of my time on the snake design, so I put some horns on the snake and we can see where it's going. And our snake is purple. Fun. So now it's finally time to start coding, or pasting, and it's the same thing anyways. The snake should always move forward, so I googled Unity move forward and found exactly what I needed. For some reason, Unity forms did not work when I made this video, so this is gonna be an extra difficult challenge. But I found this one comment that is exactly what I need, so we just put that one in and bang, now our snake moves forward. Now we need it to rotate, so we're back at it again, Unity docs for the rescue. I found some rotation based on the get axis and I control C, control V that bad boy in. I just needed to put the rotation speed to 180. So the last thing we need is to find the transform rotate and adjust our code a little bit and now we can move our snake. Now if you remember in the old snake game, the snake could eat the dots and grow bigger and this is exactly what I needed to make next. And to make our snake a big chunky boy, we needed to instantiate a prefab and that needed to be in a separate function since it will be used to be called later and you'll get what I mean later in this video. We needed a list as well, but as it turns out not a lot of people are having problems with lists because it was a really tough find. I did find one though and it's this names of destroyed objects and I didn't bother changing the name so I just left it like this. It literally makes no sense but we move. Now I just need to add the body part to the list. If we put the body prefab now and run the game we can see that our snake now shits out a block and it just stays there. And to fix that, we need another list, but this time of vector3 type. Luckily, I had some vector3 in my code, so I can just copy it from here. This time, we don't have to add the list, we have to insert it. And for that, we also need a for each loop. And at this point, I thought to myself, what is even happening? There's way too much code, there's way too much going on, there was way too many unnecessary things, but everything is so goddamn random. It started to get a just a tad bit confusing, but the thing that was saving me was the fact that I pasted a good amount of code so I could just copy it easily from my script. I needed a gap variable, so I just copied it insert, changed the first letter to be lowercase and that was such a stonks moment. It was kinda simpler but harder in a way, if you get what I mean. I found this equation online pretty easily since it's just a math f dot min in the unity docs always so it's pretty much the same every time and you know earlier when i was saying that it was getting a just a tad bit confusing well our code did not work it's either i did my math incorrectly or i just got confused or probably both the bugs came and said hi but i wasn't having it i went in there to look maybe by looking at the code it would work without changing anything i started up the game and I mean, it still doesn't work. Why would, why would you think that would work? I, I literally changed nothing. But I'm starting to become a true programmer, the chosen one. Now, not only am I copying the code, now I'm blankly looking at the code, not sure what is wrong, and thinking, yes, this could be fixed by just looking at the code. But then I have spotted a mistake in the wild and when fixing it, we moved one step closer to what we want. And you said looking blankly at the stream for three hours without doing anything was stupid. Well, who is stupid now? Well, it's technically still not fully working, so maybe I'm, yeah. Now I figure maybe it's this gap that just needs tweaking. So I played around with the numbers in the inspector and for some reason it started working. 
And you know the first rule of programming is basically if something starts working out of nowhere, you don't question it, you don't try to understand it, you just thank god it finally helped you from that arrogated stare into the blank void called your goddamn IDE. Now moving forward, I just needed the little cubes to rotate and look at the cube in front of them and that's supposed to be simple. For that I could copy a lot of things from my code, I just needed to look at transform. And look at our snake now, it's a thing of beauty. And the main thing is that it works. And it could be as big as your goddamn mom. It finally works and looks so good, ah I love it. Now I need something that our snake would eat and I chose an apple. So snake can eat it, it can grow big and chunky and when I added it I also added colliders and triggers. Also went online and found an on trigger event and it was on an enemy so I just used that. And when you enter the trigger destroy the game object aka the apple and grow the snake. Pretty simple. And look at our snake eating and growing. Now in the snake original these dots would appear randomly. So that is what I wanted to do next. And that is exactly what I did. I used random range in the instantiate method so that it would be totally random but not outside the radius map. Pretty goddamn cool if you ask me. Now our snake can eat, grow and apples are spawned randomly. Now we need to make these levels harder so none of you non-gamers can beat my high score. A simple adding the cubes as walls and setting them to if trigger to destroy the snake. For the score system I created a simple UI that says score. Pretty innovative and some random gentleman on the internet gave us the entire code. So now we have it, it's completely ours. Thank you good sir. We need to put it so that when you pick an apple you get score. Now the last thing I wanted to do is the higher the score the tougher the level gets. Now I quickly made some levels and don't question my level design, this is not what we are here for. And I put a bunch of if statements so it checks what score you are on and it enables a level based on that. Pretty simple, done. I copied the code mostly from all my other scripts because I had a lot what I needed there. And this ladies and gentlemen was what you all been waiting for. It's the snake game made only by copying and pasting, so enjoy. So I know because I'm the creator of this game obviously that the most difficult thing to survive would be the level switching because it's, uh, it's perfect and adjusting to the new level. So if I could just somehow survive that, I'm safe. And boom, first level change survived. My snake is getting bigger and big. Oh, almost died there. Look at this apple right here. I'm a programming genius. And this is how I lose, and it's not even by a level change but what a simple mistake. I mean it was such a non-gamer move god damn it. So guys if you want to try out this game and try to beat my high score of 350 which is difficult because you know me, <laughs> I'm a pro gamer. But this game is far far from perfect but it's surprisingly difficult and really fun to play. I really enjoyed making a project like this. And it was really interesting to create something by only copying and pasting. It was actually quite difficult. Like I knew what I needed to do, but to achieve it with only copying and pasting was pretty hard. And you get lost pretty quickly. If you want to download the game, go down in the description below and you can join my Discord and that's where the link will be. Also, you can post the high score here in the comments or on the Discord. Tell me if you beat me and thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe. It really means a lot and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.